Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 21st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. Well, we got yet another sort of variation of attacks against digital video recorders. This time it's the NVMS 9000 digital video recorder. And the hard-coded password being abused here is for a change, not a Teladin SH password, but instead an HTTP password. In addition, this particular attack takes advantage of a web application vulnerability that does allow arbitrary code execution. Now, what's also a little bit different here is that in case of just using curl or wget in order to download the additional software, here netcat is used. Not sure if this is because wget and curl is not on this particular system, but then again, you know, netcat is less likely typically to be found on these type of DVRs. He who detected this and wrote up uh, this particular diary did observe two particular IP addresses that the victim was instructed to connect back to. However, neither one of these IP addresses appears to be still up. So not really sure if this is just still going on or if it's going to download this malware from various other IP addresses as well. The port that's being used here, 31337, well, uh, that kind of should stick out if you are looking at your logs. Now, when Android first introduced uh, the ability to unlock your phone or your tablet uh, with your face, it was uh, quite buggy and easy to bypass. All you needed really was a picture of the individual in order to unlock the device. Now, since then, companies like Apple, for example, have made it much more difficult uh, to fake a particular biometric identifier like a face and in its latest version, the Pixel 4, Google also introduced a fairly complex camera system in order to better identify the face and discriminate better against the pictures and the like. But with all the technology, it looks like they did overlook a fairly simple problem. The Pixel 4 apparently can also be unlocked with your eyes shut. Now, why is this a big problem? The problem here is that this this could essentially allow someone to unlock your phone while you're sleeping, while you're unconscious, so without you willingly participating in unlocking your phone. Now, Google confirmed this behavior in its support website, and it refers to the lockdown mode for the phone, which essentially deactivates facial recognition for anybody not willing to accept the risk of having their phone unlocked just with their face. Of course, there's always the problem that someone will just hold up the phone to your face while you're awake or that you actually accidentally unlock it just by looking at the phone. Now, while this issue could be seen somewhat as a side effect of the general idea of being able to unlock your phone with your face, the other option, of course, you have is a fingerprint sensor. And fingerprint sensors also have evolved over the last few years to better discriminate, uh, for example, fake fingerprints and the like. But apparently, Samsung in its latest Galaxy S10 phone did introduce another problem. Now, one special feature of this phone is that the fingerprint sensor is below the display. It uses ultrasound in order to measure the ridges of your finger. But one issue apparently here is the introduction of screensavers. Many people protect these rather expensive and fragile screens with foils and other transparent materials. And apparently, once you you apply such a device to your phone, it will unlock with 
any fingerprint. It's not 100% clear what's the root cause here, whether just the introduction of that additional material renders that sensor essentially ineffective and all fingers now look the same, or whether there is some more subtle software vulnerability. Samsung did announce that they will fix this problem in an upcoming software update. In a report by Security Research Labs, short SRL, is outlining the risk of modern smart speakers being used for phishing. All of these speakers do allow third-party developers to develop small applications for these speakers. And as part of these applications, of course, the speaker and the user are interacting with each other by either the user or the speaker asking questions. Well, the tricky part here is how to filter what questions to allow. So for example, Alexa, as part of one of these applications, could very easily ask you for usernames and passwords or other personal identifying information. Well, this report is more speculative at this point, certainly plausible that we will see something like this in the future. They are outlining some methods that NetHacker could use to bypass some of the application review that's usually being performed on these kind of apps. For example, they suggest an application could perform a legitimate function, then just go silent for a while and later announce that there is, for example, a security update available and it's asking now the user to spell out their password in order to apply that security update. Interesting technique, uh, doubt we'll see it very soon, but certainly something that I'm sure the bad guys are already working on. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.